I judge cakes like I judge people. They don't have to be handsome or pretty. If they look okay and they smell good and flies aren't landing on them, then they're okay with me. Now this is not a fancy cake, but it's a moist and delicious and about the easiest chocolate cake you can possibly make. Everything goes in one bowl. There's no mixer, no butter, no eggs. We're gonna start with the pan. We're gonna, uh, you, you grease a nine inch round cake pan. I've already greased it. And uh, I usually just frost this cake in the pan because it's so simple. But if you're gonna take it out of the pan to frost the whole thing, then you wanna use some parchment paper because it'll slip right out with the parchment. You can buy like uh, pre-cut uh, rounds like this for, for pans are perfect. So you take one of these into the greased pan and I'm just gonna put this into the bottom. This is only if you wanna take the cake out of this pan, otherwise, because I just usually just leave it in. So that's it. You do not grease the parchment, so now the pan is ready. And I've also preheated the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have failure with baking, it's very often from not measuring correctly. Let me just show you. You have to aerate the flour before you measure. If you don't, the flour, when you tap it around like that, it settles, it gets heavy, and you're going to get too much flour. If you just dip in there, you'll get too much flour. So the, the, what you have to do is aerate the flour like this. You just stir it around, lighten it up a little bit, and then you can either dip in gently, but the best way really is just to scoop it in like this, because I want all your baking to turn out, and so often people say, oh, it came out dry. It's because you're measuring flour that's settled too much. You just scoop it in there, and you level it off like that, and there's one cup of flour measured correctly into the bowl. Right There it goes. So this recipe is one and a half cups of flour, so I'm going to measure the other half just the same way, nice and light. Always aerate the flour before you measure. So one and a half cups of flour into the bowl. And the rest of the dry ingredients are one cup of sugar. I go just a little bit light on the sugar, but it's essentially one cup of sugar. It's a quarter cup of powdered cocoa, unsweetened powdered cocoa. And the one that I, the brand that I use is this. This is the one my store carries. It's a Dutch process. Try to use Dutch processed cocoa. It's much milder and you get a darker chocolate, a darker brown color too. Um, I can, you can also find this at uh, World Market. So, okay. The rest of the dry ingredients is one teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder. It's different. Baking soda and a half teaspoon of salt. Now you can, you have to mix this together. You can sift it all into the bowl and it'll mix it together quite nicely. Or you can just throw it in the bowl but stir it around a little bit because chocolate has to get incorporated before you put in the liquid. So you just stir it around a little. It doesn't have to be perfect but just essentially mixed up. Okay. Now the liquid ingredients is very simple. You can measure it all in or put it all into your measuring cup. It's one cup of cool water. It's six tablespoons of oil. I use, this is the one I'm using, I use extra light olive oil. Very, very hardly any flavor and it's heart healthy and it's great for baking. So, okay. So that's six tablespoons of oil. It's one tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice, not bottled lemon juice, freshly squeezed. Originally I made this cake with um, distilled white vinegar, which you can also use, but lemon juice works really, really well and most people have lemon juice. The last ingredient is one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I use this brand right here, really, really good vanilla, and I buy it at Williams Sonoma. Okay, so that's it. Your liquid goes in here, the dry goes in here, you mix them together, just pour this in, okay, and you stir it together. Like I said, no mixer, and you just stir this around until there are no lumps, and it doesn't take more than about 30 seconds, okay. Make sure you preheat your oven because this just takes a few minutes to put together. And the flour I was using, I didn't mention, is just all-purpose flour. Okay, so that took maybe 15, 20 seconds. Just a little bit longer just to make sure there are no lumps. It looks pretty smooth. That's it. Look how easy that was. Here's the prepared pan. Goes into the pan. Ready? That's what your batter should look like fairly soft. Okay, there's the last of the batter. And into your preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. Set your timer for 30 minutes. And I'll be back in a second to show you what it's going to look like because I baked another one already. 
Okay, this is one I made earlier, the exact same recipe. Look at this. It's dark like that from the Dutch processed cocoa. Look at how beautiful it is. And if you want to make sure it's done, you just take a toothpick, stick it in the middle. If it comes out clean like that, the cake is done. Now, so you'll put it on a cooling rack to cool. Of course, this is already done before. Now, as I said, I just frost the top, so I leave it in the pan. If you want to take it out of the pan and frost the whole thing, you just have to take a little something to loosen it from the sides, just like that. And you have that parchment paper in the bottom, remember, so uh, you just flip it over and you can finish, you can cool it in the pan for about 10 minutes and then flip it over and finish cooling it on a rack. So you just take a rack and put it upside down like that and flip it over and the cake will come right out because of the parchment paper, see? And then you just peel off the paper and there's your cake. Okay, here it is. I put it on a cake stand. Look at that. It's chocolate cake! Oh my god! Okay, I'm going to show you how I make the frosting. Now, I try to avoid butter, so I have a very little bit of butter. It's only two tablespoons of butter, softened to room temperature, into a bowl. It's good to use a tall bowl uh, like this one when you make frosting, it's going to fly around a little bit. And I have one cup of powdered sugar. It doesn't have to be exactly measured, it's just frosting. So it's about one cup of powdered sugar, one tablespoon of the same cocoa that I used in the cake, the unsweetened cocoa and a half teaspoon of vanilla. This is the easiest frosting ever. We're going to mix that up just a little bit. That's why you want the tall bowl. As it starts to mix, we're going to thin it with a little bit of milk. I'm using 1% milk. And you just add like a half teaspoon at a time because it really doesn't take long. Look at that. It's already thickening up. I'm going to add like another maybe half a teaspoon. It's almost there. I'm going to turn up the machine a little bit and just a little bit more milk. And I think usually it's about three teaspoons of milk. Three teaspoons of milk that makes it just right. Frosting's done. Look how, how easy was that. Look at that. Look at it. That's it. That's done. Okay. Now I'm going to frost the cake. Let me just take this off. And I'm not going to eat any off the off of this, the beaters. Okay. All right. Now, you'll see it's not a lot because I told you I leave it, I leave it in the pan and frost it. So, but I'm going to frost it so you can see the, the whole cake and everything. You can make double the frosting if you want. You can slice it in half and fill it with extra frosting. But this is really plenty. Look at this. Look. Look. Oh, my God. Look at that. I'm telling you. And by the way, if you want to keep this butter free, you can use this recipe for frosting. Just leave out the butter and thin it maybe a little bit more with some milk and just use it as a glaze. Just kind of glaze it over the cake and, and you'll have a butter free, a chocolate cake with a, sort of a glaze frosting with no butter. Okay. Now, what did it take me? Like a minute to make the frosting? And look at that. Okay. There it is. Now, I'm going to show you what this looks like inside. It's just beautiful cake. All right, you ready? Look at this. Look, how it's so soft and so good. No butter, no eggs. Look at this. Oh my God, look at that. It is so light and so good. There's only going to be one piece left by the end of the day. Who gets the last piece? Now, that's the big question, right? So, here's the deal. Here's my advice. If someone accuses you, someone accuses you of stealing the last piece, just deny it. They can't prove it. There's no camera in your refrigerator. Today I'm going to show you my foolproof, never fail method for making barbecue baby back ribs that are so tender you pick one up, the meat literally just falls off. Look at this. There are no words to describe how awesome these are. Are you happy with your buns? I am. I love bread. Buns, loaves, rolls, ciabatta, especially the ones with a crispy crust, the kind you thought you had to buy at the bakery, not anymore because you can make your own crusty rolls at home, no kneading, almost no work at all. Watch this.